Hello folks and welcome to the Vertigo Tea Party and Let's Try Hitman Go. It's developed by Square Enix Montreal. You can pick it up on Steam for $7.99. You can get it for Windows, Steam Play, and Mobile as well. Not sure how much it is on mobile. I think it's on both iOS and Android though that you might want to double check on. If I find links, I'll put those in the video description below. And all relevant links will be in the video description below. On Steam, it supports Steam achievements, Steam trading cards, has full controller support, and cloud saves. I'll be playing a free press copy that was provided to me to make this video. So let's go ahead and hop in. Now, don't let the fact that this game started off as a mobile game put you off. I know the initial thoughts on that. Believe me, I have them myself. And uh, especially when you take a major franchise like, oh, say Hitman and convert it to mobile, I immediately grind my teeth a little bit. But stick with me, this game, uh, spoiler alert, is actually pretty darn fun. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna start here. I think I had finished this up. As you can see, we have multiple levels that we'll go through. Uh, each level has different stages and challenges. And it looks like I just started this. So let's go back to this one where I finished, because I kind of want to go through, through some of these puzzles just so that you kind of you understand some of the mechanics that you'll be facing. Uh, and as you can see, once I finish the stage, I can go back and play one. So I'm just going to pick one at random here. I really like the aesthetics of the look. I like that it looks like a board. You can look around with the right mouse button. You can also use the left mouse button as well. However, one thing I do not like is that you cannot hold it. So sometimes I want to move the camera over here, but it won't stick. Now, that usually is pretty rare. It's not often that I really need to move the camera. I usually don't move it at all. But every now and then, it can be useful. So this is a turn-based strategy puzzle game. The idea generally is to get Agent 47 over to the exit marked here, or to assassinate a target, which will be marked as a red, like a red suited person. That's the main objective. You typically, well, you always, other than the tutorial missions, always have two side objectives. Usually there are things like this, collect the briefcase, or make it out in 17 turns. Sometimes you can get both objectives at the same time. However, I've found generally, uh, sometimes it's not possible at all. And oftentimes it's just easier to try to get one and then get the other one later. Uh, and it marks that you do not need to do it all at once. Uh, and I'll go over why those, those marks are important other than they make you feel good that you finished them. So let's do a, a, a test stage here. They're introduced a new enemy here recently. This is the knife, the, uh, I like to just call him the knife guy. So we drag 47 to the right, and when we move, the enemies move, and that's important. We move first, enemy moves, enemies move second. That's a very important thing to note as we progress. And you can see from the arrows, it shows you where we can move. We can move up or we can move left. Whoops, did not mean to do that. Move back, nothing's uh, lost there. So we're gonna move up here. Now these knife guys, if you move in front of them while their knife is out, they will stab you. However, if they are have their backs turned to you when you first move into their spot, then they will not. So we're going to take him out. Brutal kill. Very good. We also have these trap doors that we can go into. Now, because this guy's turned away, we can go ahead and warp over here. That does count as a move, and he turns around. Uh, the, this counting as a move is actually important if you're trying to get the side objectives for making less moves. So, again, we're just going to take him out. And just to show you what happens if we fail, actually, you know what, let's just finish this one because this is a pretty easy one overall. Now, if we attack this guy, we'll be fine. But this guy, as you see, will stab us. And we need to start the stage over. So let's go ahead and just do that again. And again, movement is done by clicking and dragging, which does show the mobile roots. I would rather, I, while that type of movement is fine, I would much rather have made it so that I can click to go where I want. So if I want to go here, I should be able to just click here. Again, it's, it's not a big deal, but it's a little bit more work could have been done to make the controls a little bit easier to use as far as that goes. But let's go ahead and move myself over. This time we know we can't take him out. And we cannot, uh, we can't use the stairs to go over there. So we need one, this is one interesting thing that comes up a lot is if we say, oh, well, we'll just move and then move back so that we can teleport over, or, you know, walk over quickly, it's not going to happen because the way, I guess, the way it works out is that if you move an even number of spaces, which is almost the case, 
to get back to where you were, the enemy is going to be in the same position in a case like this. That doesn't make sense as I'm explaining it, but trust me, it will if you've, you've played it a bit. And hopefully we'll see a little bit of examples of that. And I'll show you uh, definitely a few stages. So I'm going to actually go back for the purpose of throwing the uh, pattern off. Oh, well, now this guy's turned around. Oh, okay, right. I see what I did wrong. I was kind of getting in too much of a hurry there. So let's take this guy out. Now, this is one nice thing about this game. Uh, is one is that I keep screwing up because I'm focusing too much on talking about how it works. Is that if you do die, it, it's you restart the stage, but it's not really a problem. As someone who really hates redoing the same things over and over again, it's a non-issue. Because usually if I screw up later in a stage, I know how to get back to where I have I've been. Now I've not beat the game yet. I'm about I'm about uh, like two two and a half hours in, I'd say. So now we know if we move over, move over here, this guy's knife will be pointing this way. And if then if we move here, we're gonna die. So this time we're gonna move over here. Now these guys can only face left or right. Well, I guess I should say the only well. Yes, you know what I mean. Left and right. So in other words, he'll never stab me from this direction because he never faces this way. He's either facing west or he's facing east. So we can take him out and he's facing away. So we can take him out. Take him out. Move over here. And now his back's to us. I'm gonna pop on over. Take him out. Now his knife is this way. Now we don't have to do this, by the way. This is completely optional. I just wanted to show you the briefcase. So we're going to go over here, go back, and again, throw off the pattern, because it was one, two, three, four, five, set. I, it's one of those things, I know how it works, I know how to get it to do what I want it to do, but I couldn't explain it very well. Probably because I don't really fully understand it. So now when we move, his knife is away, we'll move over, stab him, take the briefcase, pick that iconic Agent 47 briefcase and get out of dodge. Oh, and I got an achievement. I'm not quite sure why, but that's fine. So typically, like I say, typically you can't get both because I don't think a lot of, uh, most stages seem to be collect the briefcase and X number of turns or fewer. And I found that often to get the briefcase, it takes too many turns. You have to do the, the stage twice. But again, as someone who hates redoing things, it's not a problem for me because oftentimes to get the the second bonus card you have to do the stage in a different way so it's not really a problem because it's it's the same stage but you're having to approach it from a different angle so i find that that doesn't actually bother me that much let's hop on over let's take 11 because i think 11 really threw me off if i remember right it might have been 10. so this is a different kind of guard and now we're being introduced into the costume mechanic now these yellow guards move and again le i say left and right but they can go up and down too depending but you know what i'm talking about so these guards can go left and right only once they get to the end they go back and forth that's all they do now if you stop in front of them in fact i'll show you so now he's facing this way if i go there he's going to take me out however if we come from the side or if we come from behind we can take him out. However, these yellow guards typically are quite difficult, if not impossible, to take out, given the way the board is set up. So, we have a costume in here. Oh, we also have these stationary blue guards. They never move, and they block... Uh, you could think of them, I guess, as a... Not even really a rook, because they will attack you if you move into this square, but that's it. So, if I move here, as you saw, it's fine. So, they only guard this. So, they're the easiest guards to deal with, typically, because they don't move. So, we are going to just show off the costume here. Again, classic uh, 47 Hitman uh, device. We're going to grab the costume. And now, when we pop out, he's not going to recognize us. But, if we do this, that guard will recognize us. So, it's actually kind of opposite of the way that it typically is. Uh, at least uh, in like how it was in Absolution. And maybe blood money? I don't recall. But I know in Absolution, you would tend to be spotted by people wearing the same costume. So if I dress as a cop, the cop know the other cops, so they'll spot you. Works the opposite here, so don't get uh, turned around on that, or that will cause a problem. So let's grab the suit. They also, they don't get notified in any way. Like, him watching me take the guard out isn't going to make him realize, you know, blow my cover or anything. There's no mechanics like that, at least that I've found so far. 
And of course I did the exact same thing because I'm super smart. But again, kind of to show you that you can just hop right back over here. It doesn't take very long at all to get back where you were. Again, we don't have to worry about this guy. Now, of course, I could just leave, but I'm not gonna. Gotta get revenge. See, and here we got a no kill. So let's try that at no kills. So we're gonna go down here, same, same idea, because we need the suit to get past these guys. We'll go around this guard. Now, some of these stages I'm showing you are fairly easy just because they're also showing you new mechanics. So a lot of times when they'll introduce a new mechanic, that particular, I should say level, because this is the stage has each stage has 15 levels. At least the stages I've been to all have 15 levels. Or uh, <laughs> what did I say? Damn it! Hold on. Let's click this one. And this is an assassination type mission. And I love this version of Ave Maria. Just throwing it out there. Love that in Blood Money. Uh, so this is a little bit more complicated, as you can see. So let's just try to beat this one. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Now, we can't move forward because the guy in yellow is going to spot us. So really, our only option is to pop over here. We also have a key mechanic where as soon as we open the blue or grab the blue key, this blue door opens. When we grab the red key, the red door opens. Can't really see it. There it is. Now, this can actually be important as we will see here soon. I can't get over there just yet. Actually, it won't. Well, actually, it will matter. Sorry. We're going to grab this red key. Key. Now notice it opens the door immediately. In some cases you need to factor that in because now his patrol is going to be longer and sometimes you need him to be in a specific position so you might not want to get the key just yet. You might want to uh, delay it. So we're going to spoop over here. Now this guy's fine but he turned back around so we're going to pop over here and now we're free to take him out. Now if we grab this He's going to stab us. We don't want that. Being stabbed kind of sucks. So we're going to move up here. We can't move over here because he will, again, stab us. So let's go ahead and move in here. Go ahead and take him out. Now, you do need to be careful because sometimes you'll do things like that thinking, okay, I'll just take that out. Now, notice if I move over here, this dude's going to get me. So I move up here to waste a turn and uh-oh, now we're kind of boned because we have to move, you can't pass. There's no turn passing. So we have to move here, which is gonna get us, or we have to move here, which is gonna get us. So we got ourselves in trouble. Sometimes the game will tease you like that. They'll give you like, oh, this guard's completely open. You can take him out. But if you do it, you end up uh, hurting yourself. So let's go ahead and grab this again. Go on over here. Now, one thing that you do have to keep in mind and this threw me off quite a few times. Just because a guard is looking at you doesn't mean you can't take them out on your turn. So for example, let's say you ended your turn here and well, okay, let's, let's do it another way. You say you've got this patrolling guard here and let's say we are right here. If I moved here and then on his turn, because again, remember the enemy moves after us. We move here, the enemy moves here. Now, of course, we're in his vision range, but because he, we were not in his movement path before he moved, we're fine. That means we can actually go ahead and move and take him out. I've actually forgotten that a few times, and it screwed me up quite a bit. So let's go over here. I'm going to take him out. We can't move here because he's coming back. We can't move here because he's coming back. That leaves us pretty limited options. So we're going to move back and forth. Sometimes I find that you you are going to just kind of move to keep the enemies moving, if you will. All right, so we need to get back to the elevator thing, I think. We'll pop over here. Let me, let me express that a little bit better. Sometimes you just move back and forth to, to get certain enemies, especially these yellow guys, to move a little bit further along. Obviously, if you're trying to get the bonus objective of less moves, sometimes you need to find to make that a little bit more efficient. So, we can't move forward because we're going to get stabbed. So, I'm trying to actually remember how to beat the stage now. So, we need that blue key. The trick, though, is we can't grab it with this guy over there. I think we need to do this. I got to time this a little bit better. 
Well, this is not going to work because he's going to... Let's, let's try something here real quick. Move back. Now, I think if he sees you wear the costume, he'll stab you, I think. Ah, no, he does not. Okay. So if we move here and try to move up, that's not going to work because then he'll... This person, this enemy here will move into this position and see us. So we can't do that. We're going to move back down. And we'll move here. And we're going to kind of just waste some turns. Waiting for this guy to get out of the way, basically. Move down. And, uh... Now, again, you'll be tempted to grab the suitcase, but if you do that, he's, this guard is going to move up to this position, and you have to move, so you're going to get killed. So do not do that. The, they like to put in little tricks like that, pretty clever little tricks. So we are, because we're dressed, we're going to do this. Another thing you have to keep in mind, too, is you cannot kill these guys while you're disguised. Make sure to uh, not forget that, because that has got me a few times. Go over here and take him out. I don't think I got either. Well, I did before. I did get the side objectives before. But if you're the type who's just going to go through and not do the side, like the side objectives, I don't know how much gameplay this is going to give you because most of the stages aren't too difficult. Again, at least uh, so far as I've played so far, I'm on the third stage, I think we're calling it. So these are stages, right? And there's 15 levels within the stage. So this is the only stage of the new stage. That I've got to. As you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, quite a few stages. There's quite a few, I'm sorry, quite a few levels and stages, especially given there's 15 levels on each one, I believe. Uh, now, you'll also see that these are locked and they have a requirement of 89, I'm just going to call them 47 points. That doesn't make any sense. That's terrible. Uh, just points. They take 89 points. Again, you get those points from doing the objectives so completing the mission will always give you one and then you have the two side objectives as well they automatically unlock once you finish the level so even if i hadn't gotten 89 by the time i finished level three level or uh, stage four would open automatically i believe but you can also open them ahead of time as you can see these two take 89 points so i can just click on this one complete 11 more objectives to unlock this chapter okay well maybe not I don't get... Oh, oh, I see. It's saying I've got 89 of 100. I'm not quite sure why it's showing it there when it's got it down here. But, uh, all right. That's fine. How many more? 11? We're not going to do that, probably. But let's go ahead and try... And this is kind of a shame because I wanted to see this one because this stage is inspired by one of the hit, the good uh, Hitman Blood Money levels. So let's, um, let's try this. Let's see what kind of new guards we've got. I have not done this before, so this could be embarrassing. More embarrassing than the last attempt. Again, I really love this aesthetic. I really like just the way everything looks like a toy, and it's even to the point where it looks like a like a like a nice toy. It's got the level name on it. I I really like that that aesthetic. One thing I would really like for this game to have is a oh I bet these guys go in in circles. One thing I would like for this game to have is a step counter. If you're going to have a side objective to get that includes steps, then in my opinion, there should be a stage counter or a step counter. I can understand why you wouldn't do that on mobile, but we're you're not on mobile. You're not on mobile anymore. You've got the power of the PC here. Somewhere show the steps, even if it's just an optional thing. I would like to see the steps. You can also get tips. Now I don't know. Oh, okay, I see. These are like specific tips for specific uh, sub-objectives. So if you're really struggling to get that side objective, you can try to get a tip. However, you'll see warning. Using hints will prevent you from unlocking the Silent Assassin achievement. Do you wish to continue? You can reset your game from the options menu to give you another chance. I'm going to say no because I want the silent, the, the, the silent, silent achievement thing. And let's be honest with ourselves. Uh, if you d can't figure it out and you want that achievement, you're gonna look online. Uh, and yes, I, I, you know, I might have looked online. Uh, I, for like one mission where I forgot like one very important, uh, aspect of the gameplay. Uh, but this introduces something else. The plant you could hide behind. 
and you can see we can be in the plant and they will not see us which is good because we need to go over here and grab this key now and we will hop over here now the question is can I grab this safely let's go over here no I cannot because if I go down here he's gonna move over and that's curtains for us so let's see let's actually move one step back and we're gonna follow him because we are the silent assassin and no one hears us grab that briefcase now of course because I had to make those extra steps I'm not gonna get the steps achievement or the step uh, side objective so I can just hit replay and it again keep in mind it does remember that hey he got the briefcase I've forever gotten that marked I don't have to do it again so let's see if we can quickly figure this out and as you can see already but I'm talking about where it would be really nice to have the uh, step marker I don't think it's gonna matter here because this stage really easy because they're trying to introduce us to a new guard type eh, we're gonna have to go this way that's fine pop in there let's see if we got it no, we did not. Hmm, we'll try it one more time, and then we'll check probably one, maybe two more stages. It'll be a fairly short video for a let's try, but I think you kind of understand how this works. Now, if we go over here, he's definitely going to move up. You know what? Maybe this these guards operate differently. Nope, they do not op different, operate differently than other guards. Sometimes you have to experiment. That's another thing that struck me when I first started playing. There was literally zero tutorial. This game did not tell me anything when I started. Like it was, it didn't tell you how to move the character. It didn't tell you what the objectives were. It was 100% figure everything out. Now it wasn't too difficult to do that. But it could be a little disconcerting, a little off-putting for people who don't play games like this a lot. Now, again, because it's on PC, it's maybe not as big of a deal. But it, it, it was a bit odd that there was absolutely no tutorial whatsoever. I was expecting Diane's voice to kick on at any moment. Now, we can't just go up because we're going to get busted. So I have an idea that might save us some turns. Maybe go in here and pop out. Does that give us it? Yes, okay. There is a lot of that, and I like I like that kind of mechanic where sometimes you, you quote-unquote waste turns just to get the guards to move. So you notice I move to the plant, move back out, move in, move in just so that the guard would get a little bit further so that I can sneak behind him. Let's do at least one more stage here. The only other... Oh, and I think this stage actually has it from the look of it. Yes, good. I was hoping it would. So this stage... We cannot get the key right now. This case stage has the distraction, the rock. Uh, the, it, it can come in many forms like rocks or pool balls, but when you pick up the distraction item, you can you have to throw it immediately. You can't carry it with you, so there's no strategic element there. You always know, okay, I need to throw it somewhere immediately. Now what the, this object does is within a radius, guards will hear it and move to that position. So really, the only way we can move this to get these guards out of place is to go here. And you'll see the sound range. He'll go, huh? And now he's going to go over there to investigate. Now, once they go over to investigate, they will sw generally switch back. I'm not sure what these guys do. Oh, I think he, he's going to come back. Gotcha. He should go... Yes, okay. Now, typically, guards will move there and go and just pick up whatever pattern they normally have. For example, if one of the knife guys moves over here, they just start switching back and forth, like, you know, flipping on 180 degree turns with the knife. The blue guards will just stand there forever. And then the yellow guards will go over here and then start a, a pass. So if I had thrown a, the uh, rock over here, the yellow guard would have came over here for a turn and then just started pathing back and forth here. Which, uh, again, is a pretty important mechanic uh, that I screwed up once. So, let's see if we can grab this briefcase. Hop into the plant here. Grab that. And get out. Got the briefcase. Uh, we'll try 19 turns real fast. Overall, I've quite enjoyed this. I wasn't quite sure what to think, honestly. You know, as with... 
a lot of folks, I I immediately get a bad feeling when I think, oh, we're taking we've taken this major beloved franchise. Ah, screwed that up already. Can I still get over there? I wasted one turn. I don't know if that's gonna get us. Ah, wow, nice. I, I immediately thought, oh god, no, they're taking the beloved Hitman franchise and putting it on mobile. Like, uh, this is not gonna be good. But I've actually quite enjoyed it, uh, quite a bit. Especially for, what is it, like eight bucks? This could be a fun, casual game. Now, it's not been very difficult, especially, again, if you're the type who's just not gonna bother with the side objectives, it can be a bit too easy. But I, I feel like that's not this game's strength. The game's strength is not just beating the level, but doing things to get those side side objectives, which to me speaks very strongly to what Hitman is about, right? Like in the Hitman games, you could have obviously, uh, I'm going to probably botch this because I'm going to try to wrap up my thoughts as we do it. Hmm. Well, that screwed us. But I think that kind of speaks to the, the uh, spirit of Hitman, right? Is it's not just killing your mark. It's not just about finishing them off. It's finding interesting ways in which to do it. Like, there's a good stage in Hitman Blood Money, which is most of them, has a target or targets, and there's all kinds of ways. You can go in, run and gun. You can make it look like an accident and poison them. You can make it, you know, have a chandelier fall on their head. All these other ways of beating the stage. So it's not just about beating it. And I think most people who like Hitman would tend to agree with that. It's not just killing the person, running in with your guns blazing and then running out. Like you can, but and it's an option, but it's not as fun as is being sneaky and about it. And that's I think that's an interesting aspect uh, of this game. So this has weapons. So when you land on weapons, oh, nice. Each weapon does something different. So this one, obviously, you just shoot whoever's to the left and right automatically. And that, so that was pure luck that I got both of those guys. There's also a sniper rifle. And you'll see on the mark, a uh, mark on the map, where you can shoot. So the rifle might be over here, but there'll be like a big bullseye over here that shows you where you can shoot. And often you need to time the movement of the guards so that they land within the bullseye. So let's go up. I should be able to get in. Oh, okay, you do it both ways, I see. Oh, there is a key. I was like, is there not a key, or? Let's grab this key. And get inside. I'm curious to see what the side objectives are. Ah, kill all enemies and no kill. Obviously, you can't do both. So let's try to do both and we'll uh, wrap it up there. I wonder if there's a way to get, like, the third guy here, but... <laughs> Just the animations and stuff, what little there are, uh, amuse me uh, quite a bit. Um, I don't think there's really a way. I think we're going to need to do this one in a way that we kill at least two guards, probably. We can't move here, because this guy will spot us. Let's move into plant. Over here. And you can't pop out here, too. If you move over here, you'll just get killed by this guy. Ooh, 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 ooh. I think this should do it. Ha! <laughs> nice! Awesome. But yeah, they, like I said, they, while the puzzles aren't typically overly difficult, it does have that nice rewarding sense when uh, that when you've when you've gotten it or when you've uh, nailed it. Let's try. We'll, let's be the last one. Uh, one big negative. Well, not big, but one uh, kind of annoying negative that I found after playing a while, the game gets a little unresponsive. It's almost like it's got a little bit of a memory leak. It's not really bad. We can't move here because this guy will get us. You don't want to get the guns because we don't kill anybody. Uh, it's not like really bad, but like I say, it it definitely becomes a little less responsive. So like I feel like I was trying to drag the pieces, and sometimes I kind of have to grab it more than once. Move in 
here. This should be it. Awesome. So yeah, see, I really like the new, because again, if you just beat the stage, not that difficult. Once you figure out how the gun works, it's not that difficult. And again, keep in mind, these stages, uh, the earlier the earlier levels in the stage, are tend to be easier, especially when they're introdu introducing new guards. And then after you've figured out how they work, it does tend to, uh, to ramp it up a little bit. So let's go back out. And lastly, uh, two more and I could have unlocked that, but that's fine. Again, you kind of understand the mechanics of, of this game. So let's look at the options. And then I'll, again, I'll kind of finish what I was talking about before as I wrap up my thoughts on this game. Uh, resolution, you can change the resolution. Sound and music on, there's no volume sliders, which typically I dislike when there's no sliders. However, the music and sound is fairly low anyway, and the music is just kind of in the background. It's it's not over overpowering, so it's not as big of a deal uh, because typically that does get my goat. Uh, full screen, you can turn full screen on and off, V-Sync on and off, and then there's credits. So minimal options, but to be expected, one from quite frankly, a mobile port, and two, a game like this doesn't really need extensive, uh, <laughs> extensive options. Yeah, I, granted, I've got a, a nice machine, but like even just on the in, like in-game playing, I'm getting like 200 frames a second. So this game is not very intense on your machine. Again, as it shouldn't be. Even when I was experiencing the issues where I thought it might have been a memory leak, it wasn't really slowing the game down. It just over time it felt less and less responsive. It still worked, but it was a little frustrating. Uh, and again, I kind of felt like I had to grab the piece sometimes more than once. But yeah, uh, overall, it's enjoyable, especially for eight bucks. If you're looking for a fun little puzzle game, and this looks like it might be up your alley, I definitely suggest it. I, I quite enjoyed it. In fact, I almost loaded it up while I was at work today uh, during lunch to to knock out some more levels because uh, and, and I actually played more than I was intending to just because I kind of got into the groove of knocking the stages out and getting all the the side objectives. So I really, really did enjoy that. Uh, I do wish that you could lock the camera when you move it around. Again, that's not something that comes up often, but it's just a little thing that I would have liked. I would have also definitely appreciated a step counter, counter or at least the option to turn it on because sometimes it, it didn't really show here in our, our options today. And again, please keep in mind, some of these were very easy stages. There's definitely been stages that to get all the side missions or the side uh, bonus objectives, uh, it took me quite a while and quite a few attempts to get right. Two or three stages in particular, I really got stumped on uh, getting, again, not beating, but just getting the side objectives. But having that step counter would be very nice because otherwise you have to count one, two, three every time you move. So it, it gets a little irritating and I don't see why we can't have a step counter in this version. But uh, otherwise, yeah, $7.99 on Steam. Again, I believe it is still on. I mean, I don't know why it wouldn't be still on mobile on iOS and Android. I don't know what price it is on there. I would imagine it's probably gonna be the same or maybe even lower. But yeah, definitely check it out. And uh, again, links will be in the description below the video. Now, I would like to have any video or uh, any comments you guys have. Let me know what you thought of this game. Let me know what you thought of this video. Did that help you decide yay or nay on purchasing this game or not? Just interested to uh, find out. And anyways, if you guys want to see more videos like this where I cover some, uh, some games you may or may not have heard of, make sure to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, and I will see you next time.